Our solar system lies within the Milky Way galaxy. There are many parts of the solar system that you are probably familiar with, and there are many parts that are still unknown to you. We are going to explore our solar system in an effort to develop a better understanding of the unique celestial bodies orbiting the closest star to our little planet, the Sun. The Sun is 99.9% .9 of the solar system by mass. It is extremely massive, relatively speaking. Compared to other stars, it's simply middle of the road in terms of mass. Now, in order to be considered part of our solar system or any solar system, a celestial body must be under that star's gravitational influence. Mercury is the closest to the sun, solidified with impact craters due to a lack of atmosphere. It's very hot during the day and very cold at night. Venus is the hottest planet due to a runaway greenhouse effect. This is our home. The red planet, Mars. Jupiter, the most massive planet. A raging storm known as the Great Red Spot has been active since at least 1830 when they first started observing it. Saturn and its beautiful rings made of small particles of ice and rocky debris. Uranus, which rotates almost on its side. Neptune, the windiest planet. The dwarf planets, which include the well-known former planet Pluto and the much less known asteroid belt resident Ceres. Our moon, one of many moons in the solar system, is, a un is unique due to how large it is compared to the Earth. Most moons are very small compared to the planet they orbit. These four moons, known as the Galilean moons, are most well-known uh, are the most well-known moons of Jupiter. All of these things and more are included in our solar system and are important pieces in understanding its formation. There's an imaginary plane, like a piece of paper, that all of the planets and the sun are all on, and that they're all about the same level on that piece of paper, and that plane is known as the ecliptic. And there's some slight variations. There's some inclination where some of the planets are above or below that plane as they orbit around the sun, uh, especially uh, the dwarf planets like uh, Pluto, which have significant inclination. Uh, but as you can see, relatively speaking, these planets are all on that same line, which is known as the ecliptic. The extreme inclination of Pluto's orbit, part of what is what led astronomers to demote it to a dwarf planet. Most of the planets orbit near the ecliptic, with Mercury's inclination being the most extreme. The terrestrial planets are the planets that are rocky, like Earth. They're very dense, as they are made of solid rock, mostly silicate minerals. They're relatively small, compared to the much more massive gas giants. They have low escape velocities compared to the massive gas giants. The escape velocity refers to the velocity that would uh, be needed to maintain in order to escape a planet's gravitational pull. The terrestrial planets have lower escape velocities because their gravitational for force is much weaker than those of the much more massive gas giants. The Jovian planets, also known as the gas giants, are made of mostly gas, which means that they are less dense. Saturn has a density that is less than the density of water. That means that if you had a large enough swimming pool, Saturn would float. They have much greater gravitational forces that pull many dangerous asteroids and meteoroids from orbit that could otherwise be extremely dangerous to life on Earth. Their thick atmospheres are mostly hydrogen and helium. Uranus and Neptune both appear blue due to higher levels of methane in their atmospheres. This image shows the sizes of the planets proportionally, so you can appreciate the size disparity between the terrestrial planets and the gas giants. Hydrogen is the most common element in the universe. The massive gas giants are composed heavily of it, and so are all the stars throughout the universe. 
The terrestrial planets are mostly silicate minerals, being composed of silicon and oxygen, with iron cores. The iron is much heavier and would sink to the middle of the planets during early stages of formation. Uranus and Neptune are considered ice giants. They have icy cores composed of frozen ammonia and methane. Based on a great deal of observation and data collection, the nebular hypothesis seeks to explain the formation of a solar system, like ours. This hypothesis is based on the idea that our solar system, like all others, formed from a nebula condensing. So what is a nebula? If that question popped in your head, that's fantastic. A nebula is a, gr a giant cloud of dust and gas in space. Nebulae form from giant stellar explosions called supernovae. Therefore, stars are born from nebulae and then sometimes die to form new nebulae. Uh, regions where new stars are beginning to form, uh, these nebulae are sometimes called star nurseries. So as you can see, the supernova is forced. Uh, uh, it's, it's cloud and, and dust, and it starts to come together. It's forced together. Uh, gravity pulls it together. And then it starts to rotate. Uh, and that spinning disk, it starts to create these uh, planetesimals. Those planetesimals grow into protoplanets, which eventually become planets. And at the heart of it is a star. And like we mentioned before, our star is 99.9% .9 of our solar system. Materials are composed um, separated. So our planets are composed of different materials and they separate it. It's a process called chemical differentiation. This is what led to the lighter elements, hydrogen and helium, oxygen and silicon, staying near the surface, while the heavier elements, iron and nickel, settled toward the center of the planets. The dense metal, uh, iron, nickel, sank towards the center, silicate, staying towards the surface. Okay. Venus and Earth have um, atmosphere, whereas Mercury uh, does not, and Mars has a very uh, thin atmosphere. And the very cold, all the Jovian planets are much further away from the sun than the Earth. The Earth is around 94 million miles away from the sun, 94 million miles. Jupiter, which is just outside the asteroid belt, is around 482 million miles away. Saturn and Uranus and Neptune are further out than that. And so they, have, they are very cold and have a lot of ice.